All praises and glorification is given up to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders of Great Millstone. Salutations, props, honors to you brothers who labor in sincerity, diligence, and faith to the best of your abilities in serving this truth of the Most High, which is the sound doctrine that is given through the Holy Spirit of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, which means Yahweh. In the name Yahweh Shai, via the Holy Spirit from the highest power and the only power in the name of His Son to the elder apostles who were given the honor to serve the sound doctrine among men here on earth. So let's go ahead and get into this real quick to the point lesson. I want to do a lesson basically concerning only the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel can be given salvation specifically the elect 144,000 though but salvation basically belongs only to the Lord's only chosen people which is the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel and there is no other nation ethnicity or race outside the sea line of Israel's that can obtain salvation unless you're a confusion of face, but that's another lesson, and that's the next lesson. So let's get done with this lesson first, and we can step into that. Let's begin with one of the most, or hey, the most quoted scripture in the whole entire world. St. <laughs> John 3 and 16. It's the book of St. John, chapter 3, verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's break this scripture down to the T-bone. Let's get into the morsels. Let's get into the bone marrow. Let's take away all the meat. Let's make it plain for you brothers. Okay. When you go into the scriptures, you find out that there is multiple words for the word world. And right here in Greek, you can see where it's read on the screen. It's the Latin word cosmos. In the Bible, you'll have the word ion or eon basically ion which means a uh, uh, age or period of time you have oiko mini and you'll have cosmos so not every time you see certain words do they all mean the same definition sometimes they have multiple definitions let's go into the definition on blue on the blue letter bible.org Number one, an apt and harmonious arrangement or constitution, order, government. Number two, ornament, decoration, adornment, and example, the arrangement of the stars, the heavenly host, as the ornament of heavens. Number three, the rural universe, which that is not definitely the answer. Could, well, everybody try to says that John 3 16 means that everybody could be saved, which is not true. It's not talking about the whole entire world, I meaning any and everybody. The inhabitants of the earth, men, the human family that goes with for, they say the whole earth, right? Number six, the ungodly multitude, the whole mass of men alienated from God and therefore hostile to the cause of Christ. Number seven, world affairs, the aggregate of things earthly. Jump down to verse eight. Any aggregate or general collection of particulars of any sort. The word aggregate means a collection of people who are different but are put together to build up one single whole unit of one same thing. So any aggregate collection of particulars, specific people of any sort. Okay? So there are particular people, there are specific people. The specific people being spoken about are Israelites and of any sort of Israelite 
The scripture says that you're going to have Israelites that are good and bad called to the wedding. And you have different tribes, different sorts of Israel. You have 12 different tribes, which goes back to aggregate, which means a collection of people who are different. They're, they're of a different characteristic or element, so to speak, but they make up one single whole unit. You got the tribes of Judah and Issachar, the so-called Negro Americans and the so-called Mexicans are the same people, but they are different in character in certain variated degrees, in certain variances, in certain fashions, okay? Same thing with Dominicans and Puerto Ricans, Haitian and Jamaicans, and etc. I'm referring to Israelites right now, okay, by by their by the earthly modern given nationalities and bywords and all that other BS. So the aggregate is the different uh, the different tribes who are brought together to make one single whole unit, and the collection is a number. The number is 144,000. Of particulars The specific people Is Israelites Of any sort You have good and bad Of Israel Called to the wedding You have brothers Who were once In the world Doing wickedness They're probably Gang banging Or selling drugs Or Or committing adultery Whatever the case may be Whatever sins They were committing But they repented And now they're doing The word on the most side They're doing righteousness Instead of being evil And doing wickedness Okay So let's go back St. John 3 and 16 That whosoever Believeth in him The word for whosoever in Greek Or Latin Is the Latin word pas It says individually Which is They say each, every, any, all You have collectively Some of all types some of all types of Israelites Of different walks of life And the different tribes of Israel And when you break down the word whosoever The word who refers to a person So means therefore And ever means at any given point in time Meaning Israelites could repent at any time That is before judgment comes Okay Because once judgment comes Then you put to death And that's, that's during judgment day It says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Okay. Let's get the precept real quick. St. John chapter 7. Verse 9 It says I pray for them I pray not for the world But for them But for them But for them But for them Which thou has given me For they are thine so he didn't pray for the whole entire world But didn't it not say in St. John 3 and 16 That he died to save the whole entire world Now you have conflict So called conflict within the scriptures You know why? Because just as I did for example On the blueletterbible.org I went to the concordance for the definitions In the Latin In the Greek and Latin To, to define and to prove that the word that words have multiple definitions and to be specific or particular the word world has multiple definitions so he prays for them which we know of course is the revelation 7 chapter 144,000 elect portion of israelites who are going to be saved and the only ones who will be saved with the one-third portion of women and children he says but he says, he says, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, again, the elect. So he prayed not for the world. But what, what world does he do pray for? What world did he die to come and save? Let's get the precept to prove it. Uh, 
Isaiah chapter 45 verse 17 it says, Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end The key word right there is the word world Okay Is this word right here World without end. What world is that referring to? <laughs> it says it in the scripture, man. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord and Yahweh with an everlasting salvation. And you see a colon. The colon always gives details to whatever is said as a preface before. Ye should not be ashamed or confound the world without end. So the world without end. The world without end is referring to Israel. So to further back this up, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, and she, referring to Mary, shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Yahawashai, where he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. <laughs> it put, a, it put a, a, a damn semicolon, but it's all right, though. Matthew 15 and 24. It says, But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So basically, we just read two scriptures back to back that proved that Yahweh Shai Christ only came to die for the nation of Israel. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, it said his, which is a possessive pronoun, is a possessive pronoun, because it's only indicating his people, who he was a part of a nation, race, or ethnicity of, which is the Israelites. All right? <laughs> Got these little. Uh, filthy ass Moabite or Ammonite kids. Look like some uh, some Moabites. Okay. Acts chapter five, verse thirty. This is the book of Acts chapter five, verse thirty. It says, "The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree." Have Yahweh, the most high power, exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Did it include any other nationality, any other ethnicity, any other race outside the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel? No. But if you want to get technical, you have the Israelite confusion of faces, which will be explained in the next video over. So, I'm going to wrap this lesson up and I'll go ahead and get into part two. Shalom.